Hey everyone, Aaron here with Roy. I'm so happy to have Roy Diblick back in the garden so we can sort of analyze the garden that mm -hmm. Roy designed for me last year and we worked on together over here. Oh, it's really a treat, so thank you for oh, coming. Thanks for Roy having Dibble. me back. I, 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 I enjoy the, the ride and coming back here. This good. is too good. Good. It's a, see your place. It's and the garden looks super. Thank. Well, thank yeah, you for that. Look super. A little nerve-wracking. <laughs> no. Nerve-wracking. I want to... You know, I want, to, I want to do right by you, Roy, so... No, no, that looks great. But I have to say, um, we're here sort of taking a look at what's happening with all this garden, but for the most part, things are looking really good. We've got a few areas, maybe like one area that needs a little bit of massaging and a few other things that, um, that we can kind of change around. Yeah. But um, in general, things did pretty well, and I'll have to say, you know, this this was not a lot of maintenance, even as, as a first year garden. You know, I, I did the hoeing last year, mm -hmm. hoeing between things, and um, I did put in a little bit of leaf mulch, mm -hmm. um, right. and I yeah. kind of mostly left the leaves that fell yeah. where they were, yeah. and then I just did a chop and drop on it. Right. I did no no. In fact, a lot of this was a really I like rough that phrase chop, chop and drop. drop. That, yeah, that, it's that has a rhythm right. to it. I like that. That's good. Um, just a very quick cleanup yeah. on it, you know, not a not a high mm -hmm. maintenance thing. And I've just been trying to keep keep up on a few of the things that are trying to sneak in I think, there. I think with the hoeing, you know, two, three, four times when mm -hmm. it's young, mm -hmm. that really takes care of it at yeah. an early age. Yeah, it's been it's been wonderful because I, I would say really, I don't expect a garden in its first year to be low maintenance, mm -hmm. but it really has not been a lot mm -hmm. of maintenance. I'll mm -hmm. say that. I'll say that. Yeah. So. We'll say water, watering you have to watch. Lots That's of watering. The key to There's watering. been a lot of watering, yeah. yes. So that is the one thing is mm -hmm. the watering for sure. Well, you know your soils too. Right. You have a sandier soil. Yeah. By us, we have clay. Right. So we have to water, but we have to be thoughtful. Right. About how often. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah, this looks good. It's not a big deal here if I let, if I forget that the sprinkler <laughs> is running for a while. Nothing bad's no. going to happen over here. No. So, so good. So Roy's here, so we're going to walk through everything for you guys all to see, but, um, you know. Just the spoiler alert here is we're pretty happy with it. It looks pretty good. It's yeah, alive. Well, I always start with the, is it alive? Then, I, <laughs> well, then once you get past, the, okay, it's alive. <laughs> now let's assess it for how, that's a good how it looks. Now it looks healthy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. everything came yeah. back, yeah. came back really well. Mm -hmm. I don't see, we had a couple of. No, that's no. Part that gets your eye quickly is the aeroides. Yeah, yep. Yes. I, th I should have brought what we can do. An option to keep aeroides is to you space them an extra, if extra four or five inches, mm -hmm. and in between there you put Carex humilis. Oh, okay. Which is a dry. Oh, okay. Just dense clumping when oh, you come. Nice. Yeah. I'll give you some humulus. Okay. And just plant Carex humulus okay. in between here, and that's rich green in April. Oh, nice. But it only gets this high. Okay. And then Great. the sprabulus will come up. We'll see yeah. if it comes up through. We'll see how that works. Okay. I'm just thinking of Carex humulus yeah. in between here for yep. green. Mm -hmm. You don't need you don't need a, everyone. You just put like one there, mm -hmm. here, there. Just kind of scatter it okay. through. Great. You can even put a few in between the the limonium. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And Good. then after you do that and see how it works, then you can, then you say, you know, there's other places I could use this to right. fill space right. and create a green look. Wonderful. And and he, I, that's what I use humus for now. And uh, I got that from Ed Snodgrass, the rooftop guy out east. Oh, really? Okay. And then now the grower for that is uh, James Brown from. New Moon Nursery in New Jersey. Oh, okay, yeah. So they he, have good stuff out there. Yeah. He, he supplies it. Nice. And I grew it, I put it in the ground four years ago, not knowing anything. Yeah. So I planted it in the shade, dry shade. Oh, it looks really good. Yeah. Then I planted it in full sun by the road. Right. It looks really good. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. So it took the abuse oh, of a highway, Boy, the snow. A, oh, yeah. that's great. So I, that I, now cool. I'm... I, that's why I'm more confident telling you now about right. it. Last right. year I would have said, oh, let me see. Yeah, what right. I don't know quite yeah. yet. Yeah. See how that works out. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think this, I mean, I'm really, what do you think about this? I have to say that this, uh, this champion last year was the most glorious thing when it was flowering. Mm -hmm. 
and it was backlit. It was like this golden yeah. light. It was so it's, it's beautiful. It's like a, a, a cloud mm -hmm. yes. settled on the ground. Yeah, yeah, just beautiful. And it's the easiest dyschampsia to grow. A lot of the other dyschampsias in August get rust. Oh, this okay. one you see very little rust on yeah. in heat and humidity. Okay. Uh, it's a selection out of Germany, Gold Tau. But it seems, uh, I forgot, maybe it was Pete Outoff told me, I think. Any dyschampsia beginning with gold something is a better choice than the other dyschampsia. They have more durability. Oh, interesting. That's There's a, a few tip. more gold with German names. Okay. Gold Tau and gold something or right. Um So when I, this is the only one I grow because it does well right. in, in our heat and humidity. And it takes a little bit more drought than the other dyschampsias. Right. Wow, I, I, it does look good. Yeah, I think it, it looks really looks really healthy here. I think the only thing I would do if I was gardening it up, I didn't put enough limonium in. It's hard to see it with yeah. the salvias. Okay. So we could so add, add some more. Yeah, it could make the limonium clumps bigger and maybe okay. take out a salvia and make okay. the limonium bigger. Okay. And bigger the other thing for fun, you do it. This one I think will have big blue flowers. Mm -hmm. You can mix in limonium latifolium and take out maybe a few of the allium too and okay. move a salvia back there. Okay. And if you mix latifolium in, you'll have two blue, different blue clouds. You'll have a heavy blue and a light blue. Oh, nice. Okay. And that's like a fun thing. Right. Yeah. And just, right. If you want, there's, there's enough. And that's gardening. That's right. the part when you see the big picture. Right. Now you can garden it up or change right. some things. Right. Do some, do some adjustments yeah. and things. Like I meant that the key is it lived that was what that was my, was my fur like well, i mentioned it's a key for me too absolutely if, that's, if everything lives i'm very happy okay good. and then after that you assess right how it looks and what you want to add to it do those tweaks yeah no i love that idea of a couple of doing exactly what you just said there and adding well, in ammoniums are cool shades of i think well, the, the soft first, cloud and heavy the cloud first time I, this is the first garden i've had and i did add it in some other places after we put it here but it's the first time i've grown it and it is a lovely plant yeah it's one of those plants that i, I you know i sometimes i wonder what what was i sleeping on that for it's a great well, plant well yeah, it's like we're all the constant interns Right. We just keep learning. That's right. You know? That's right. Absolutely. What I did five years ago, I wonder why would I do that? I wouldn't do that now. Yeah. But right. f five years ago, it seemed like a good idea. Right. Absolutely. And you just keep adding and enhancing. What allium is that? Well, I think it's cool. It's, I like the I foliage. Think, I think it's Christophiae. It seems a little tall for me for yeah, Christophiae. Yeah, it's, it's, it's taller. But well, I'm pretty sure that I thought that's what I planted oh. here. But you know, yeah. I you know sometimes what what made sense in fall doesn't necessarily what translates to spring so well it'd be good to key that out though because that that foliage is beautiful it is it actually is one of the few one of the few alliums that has some decent a nice foliage yeah it's yeah. usually you hide it it gets yeah. hidden by the plants absolutely so that's that's why i like that kind of cooperation by the plants with each other yeah. look you flower make me look good i'll hide your bad foliage right right so there's that that yep conversation going on between them yeah but i really like the even not in bloom mm -hmm. the, the bud is gorgeous it is it is a pretty one so and then the coreopsis we've got some you know the coreopsis that we um dotted golden, oh, yeah. showers, golden that we, showers yeah that we dotted through there seems to be looking seems to be looking pretty pretty healthy but has that i love the texture that's that a nice texture adding. yeah so yeah when that gets when it, there's two things it can either age and fill in which it'll do where you say, eh, I think I'll put another gallon or two in to thicken it up okay. to, to, for a visual. Okay. And if you don't, it'll just fill in and the third year, it'll be bigger too. Okay. And if you stick a gallon in, that doesn't inhibit it from spreading, okay. getting bigger. It's just a, a time thing, mm -hmm. a little another year or so. This was last year. This was last yeah. year. Okay. Yep. And the Sprabulus aeroides, it's coming up well but it, i think you're, we mentioned you're talking about the cooler weather mm -hmm. it looks a little okay but it also isn't quite as, as thick as it will the one in the back looks good yeah thicker. and i was mentioning before we have a carex humilis you might place a few in here to add green to it so your eye doesn't see the emptiness right and then the cool thing about humilis it'll stay shorter and won't dominate as the sprabulus comes through it. So you right. still have the tint of blue and the flowers in late June here. Right. And then you can see where else the humulus can fit in. And you might, I don't know, your garden. Well, yeah, what would you think of, I mean, would you add some, either the sprabulus or the humulus, would you add some of that in by yeah, the- Yeah, I'd um, put the, into the 
stacked we have, up there? We have some in there already, yep. the yep. sprawless. Mm -hmm. It might be put in a few humus, like there's a hole over there, yep. a hole over here. And then after you, next year goes by, you might say, boy, I might need, maybe I need another sprawless somewhere. Or maybe I take that one out, it's okay. too much, and I move that way. Okay. And that, that's like, I, that's the gardening. Right, part. the gardening part. People go, Roy, well, you work so hard. Why do you keep moving everything? Because I want to be a gardener. Right. I don't, I don't that's, that's what I do. Right. And, and, and the key is you're doing things because you want to, not because you have to. Right. That's and, the most fun. And that is, that is the part that I look forward to the most. And that's why when I get a little, when I get so busy in spring and there's all these things that have to get done. Right. That's and what you really want to do is, I, you know, I would, you know, I'd love to just, I'd like to get those things checked off the list yeah. so you can spend some time looking at things a little bit. Yeah. Otherwise, when you're running around the garden frantically with a to-do list in your head, you miss, you miss the right. chance to sort of be in a garden and study things mm -hmm. a little bit. You don't you know? see as much as you could if you had, like, the most I see actually is when I'm hoeing. Mm -hmm. Because the hoe is slowing me down, yeah, and it's letting me see what's happening. So the right. hoe is saying, "Roy, wait a minute, did you see that?" Over, right. oh no, I did. So when I'm hoeing, I get a chance to interpret relationships. Right. But if I'm not hoeing, I walk by, I didn't see that. Right. I was in, and in some ways, you're right too. We got to get those things checked off the list because yeah, right. it'll turn around like now it's June. Right. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah. 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 My the goal is to yeah. to get things sorted at least in my head. I'm, if I'm more or less sorted by mid June, I feel pretty good about. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty good about things, and then I can get more into some of the things right. that are more fun. And and if you take on like you got a cool project going, mm -hmm. sometimes when I take on a big project, I have to say to myself, I'm not going to get to you guys this year. Right. I'm, you're going to be who you are. Right. I got a lot going on, so right. that happens too. Right. You have to apologize to part of your garden. <laughs> apologize to your garden. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I I couldn't right. make it in time. Right. The echinacea white swan that we put in there looks like it's doing really. Yeah, yeah. Looks like it's doing quite well over there, and it did really nicely last year. Um, oh, I was really impressed um, how well that did. You had, it was when we planted this garden last year. It was really the first thought I had ever had that echinacea don't need full, full sun. Mm -hmm. That they could, that you can, you can push those, and they did wonderfully. So. Yeah, the purpurea are native mostly to woodland edge. That's why they seed so yeah. freely, yeah. because the woodland edge moves, mm -hmm. and as woodland edge moves, the echinacea have to be like a gypsy. Uh, right. We gotta move, we gotta go. Right. The shade keeps changing. Mm -hmm. So you don't find echinacea purpurea in prairie. You find mostly pallida oh. and gustifolia. Right. Those are the prairie oh, ones. See. Mostly pallida here. There you go. And gustifolia is out farther west, but they, and they have the deep penetrating root, the pallida. Right. And they'll outlive us. Oh, okay. Purpurea, you know, it might, geez, right, they all died. Well, they might live eight years. Right. But you see children everywhere. Right. There's yes. children. Yes, children. All exactly. over the place. Exactly. And, yeah, people and, wonder why their, why their echinacea aren't where they left right, them. And they don't right. realize, well, those aren't, that's not the one you planted. No. That's, that's seeds. They, they seed it. Mm -hmm. And you pick and choose, like you were mentioning, editing. Yep. Um, you're, you're coming out. I'm leaving you. I like where you're at. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the nicest look People go, oh, I love the way your cornflowers drift through there. In my head, I'm saying, I didn't do that. Yeah. They seeded in, but then I thank them and take full credit for that. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, so did, did I put galenia in, in here? We have some galenia How over did they here. Do? We put some on the edge. We put some on the edge um, over here. Uh, there's one down here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Good. We put him down here. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. To kind of. Yeah, that's this area edge. from the sweet woodruff a little bit. Boy, mm -hmm. is that aggressive. Yeah. I love me happy. It's better than weeds, but oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's aggressive. I mean, when you look through yeah. her, yeah, it's mingling beautiful. Yeah. The little area. Mm -hmm. And that should push through it. Yes. You it know, it seemed to be managed it just fine. Yeah, just it should been, be able to push through it. It's now been kind of in there just no, to good. manage that a little. So. Did I give you the Scottish love? No, I bought it at oh, the you did. Oh. oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Novisticum. Yep. Yep. That's a very good plant. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's got such beautiful leaves on it. It's just yep. gorgeous. That's a great plant. It confuses. It can be confusing to native people. Oh. Because it's circumpolar. It's native to North America, Asia, and Asia, really? around the world. So, so what do you do with that plant that's native to <laughs> three continents or two continents? Well, that can't be. There can't be too many plants. 
No. That have well, if you're, I guess the circumpolar, yeah. when you go up to wherever that, where, how far north well, is that? I'm not even sure how far north that is. Unbelievable. When I read that, I thought that was cool. That it's, right. I wanted to find out where it was native to. It's in North America. I go, huh, Asia, huh, how can that be? <laughs> right. Oh, that is real. See, now I love this plant even more. That's a great story. Oh, it's very durable. It's really and it's got nice foliage. It's been it's been great. And obviously, we're quite dry right now. I can, yeah, can see yeah. the pulmonaria is, yeah. is flopping already. Um, and it manages. It seems yeah. to be managing for first-year plants. I mean, those plants have been in the ground not even a year yet. Oh, it's, a, it's a good accent plant. It, it has nice white umbels. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seed like normal umbelliferae seed everywhere, like right. dill and right. fennel. And right. it's like, well, okay, right. what am I going to do with you? Right. This doesn't seed around like that. Right. You might see one or two, but nothing you can't handle. Sure. That's why I like it too. It respects its space it's much nice. better than the other umbelliferies. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, and then this is. I think Carex bermoides, oh, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah cool. Right? Yeah. Wow, that looks good. Which did, well, you know, it's been great, and I planted some of it. You know, I put it right down yeah. here. And, and when we had big rains, I mean, it was fully, fully underwater. Yeah. And yeah. just and managed it with with no problem whatsoever. Just, you know, went looked like it was going for a ride a little mm -hmm. bit. It just hung on and, and did its thing. Yeah, I see in that rock. Mm -hmm. that, that's cool. Yep. So, yeah. How far does your water go up at, at its highest level? Well, we had, we had some big rains last year, um, and we were up to the bottom of the bridge over there. Oh, wow. So we were up you know, two feet. And it's probably moving, and too. Th and it's moving. Well, this is a little drop-off right here, which becomes a full-on waterfall. So when it's really cooking like that, it can run through here. Mm -hmm. It can run through here pretty fast. And... Uh, um, and it's great. It's, this is a really good bank. In fact, the bank got a little steeper by where we planted it oh, yeah, last year. Yeah. And some of the um, uh, some of the um, lobelia that's over there, the grape blue lobelia oh, yeah, that we planted yeah. over there, is sort of hanging on. I <laughs> had to kind of tuck it back in a little bit. Huh. Um, but uh, it it stab seems to stay have a sort of a stabilizing force here, and mm. it kind of but it whips around the corner here oh. and, and really goes. That's a dramatic it change. There. It looks so peaceful now. Yeah. <laughs> and dry it's, and peaceful. You know, yeah. it's very beautiful when it's happening, although it's yeah. a little nerve-wracking when it feels like it might be going. Well, I'm sure if you're a plant down there, you're you're kind of terrified. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. That, yeah. Look, that, that really looks good. I like that. Yeah, that sedge is just where it needs to. Usually it grows in moist, wet woods. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the... Right. Uh, yeah. There's a sedge I have. It spreads quickly by seed, but it's a floodplain sedge called Carex grissia. Okay. It looks like liriope. Okay. Oh. Wide, dark, dark foliage, and the foliage stays dark all winter. Oh. So it's green all winter, like liriope. Yeah. Lir lir but it does seed freely. Interesting. That's a that's a thing. I, I have it at North when it's, it. But it, what the cool thing is, it takes flooding, so it can be underwater. Mm -hmm. It's like it's along the uh, the Plains River. I found it in Kankakee. Mm -hmm. I think it was in Kankakee, and then. Um, when the summer gets dry, it stays as green as can be too. So it takes that wet, dry condition. That's so great. And we kind of need that for rain gardens and things where and we have. And more and more, yeah. I would say, yeah. we need that because yeah. that is certainly sort of been what's happening now as we go through very wet periods yeah. and then very dry periods. And uh, so you definitely, plants need to be a little bit more adaptable than they, than maybe they uh, used it has to be. The, I call it a forgiving nature. A forgiving <laughs> right. nature, that's a nice way to think yeah, of it. it but then the other end of it is, you know what, the plant is going, I'm going to seed everywhere on you. <laughs> well, so, right. so you want to put it in after your plants become adults. Right. And that way they can take the, sure. the opportunistic moment. But that, that works in areas like this well. I would say that is one of the best lessons that I've learned from you is this idea of staging your planting yeah. so that you you can put add in those things that I have um, a little bit more of an aggressive nature yeah. to them um, but you just have to wait you just right. don't do that at the, no. you get, let everything else kind yeah. of do their own thing and then you come back in oh, yeah. and you do that in a stage two or a stage three right. of a planting no, I, I learned that because I screwed up so many things from things seeding too heavily right like I put bronze fennel in a garden I did back in the mid 90s mm -hmm. it went everywhere yeah. Bronze fennel and everywhere. So all I did the next year was pull out bronze, bronze fennel. fennel. And said to myself, yeah. I'm never doing this again. Yeah. 
and the seeds still come up. Right. And part of, and it looks good because right. all the other plants right. are more they're, mature. Right. Because now they're controlled by everything else. So yeah, you learn. I mean, there's things you can read which are good, but then there's the experience you have after you read it, because somebody wrote it maybe who lived in New England or right. somewhere. Well, right. we're in Wisconsin. Right. Even you're in a totally different situation mm -hmm. than we are at Northwind. Yeah. But. Yeah. But the reading is good because it at least gives you a thought of an approach to something. Absolutely. And then, and then the other one is talking like we're doing to each other, mm -hmm. conversation and communication. Mm -hmm. And then when we share, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that, but I know it now. So yeah. right, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That really, it really works. So should we take a look at some of these plants that yeah. you brought? And yeah. And talk about those a little bit. Sounds good. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, I brought. Uh, it's an older uh, plant found in England, it was discovered in England, a seedling called Geranium Orion, hybrid, Geranium Hybrid Orion, but I, I really like it. It gets about uh, uh, 24 inches tall and about 24 inches wide too at the oh, same time. Right. Okay. It's large and it flowers in, uh, it's starting to bloom now, early June, and flowers all the way through the summer. Heavily in June and moments of purplish blue all the way through the summer. But what I really like about it, as it's blooming, it finishes blooming, it fills its own center. You don't have to prune it back. And some geraniums like Johnson's Blue and Spinners, you gotta cut them back because they flop over mm -hmm. and then they come up with new growth and mm -hmm. you fill their center. But what, I don't have to prune this, but I do some pruning later in the year in August mm -hmm. when it, it gets a little messy. Mm -hmm. So I go around and prune, but not the, I don't cut it back, I just cut off some of the brown. Oh, okay. Because it'll keep flowering and sending purple flowers into its neighbor. Oh, neat. So it plants uh, like a so impressionistic really good one. So yeah. really good one to plant near oh, yeah. other plants yeah. and just kind of grows through yeah. those. You want to give it another plant about 18, 20 inches, and it's a good place for bulbs in. Okay. And oh, then yeah. there's the plant will get so wide, and then it'll just start to push color into its neighbor. And it looks impressionistic. Very so cool. do you have any plants that you love to grow this, grow this with as sort of a uh, pairing? I'm looking at the one at North one it's with uh, a still bee vision in red mm -hmm. and it takes moisture it does well with the same moisture mm -hmm. as still bee. but when that little purple flower goes through the foliage of vision in red mm -hmm. that's kind of cool that's yeah it, it looks very nice that's wonderful so I thought well I'd bring that with yeah pop that's, that somewhere yeah and see that's how that great does. how neat wonderful and Thank the other you. thing it's easy yeah you know there's no oh my god what do I got what am I going to do with Right. It, it's an easy plant not to grow. one more thing even I mean even though cutting back those other geraniums is not difficult to do it is no. one more thing on the list of things yeah. that have to get done well, if so. you add up what you don't have to do now you have to think about what I do with my time right right because sometimes people say well I'm really busy right well if you take something away now they have an option to spend time on other right other things right wonderful and I'm not lazy it's just that why would I want to go prune something <laughs> <laughs> right why do it if you don't have <laughs> right. to right Beautiful and yeah. so and a purple purple flower. Purple flower. Yeah. Okay. Kind of of a little lighter than the salvia. Okay. Yeah. Great. Very nice plant. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. Um, and then this is this is what we were talking about before, right? The spirobolus. Spirobolus aeroides. Mm -hmm. That came from a, a I got seed from a guy in Utah, so it's native to Utah. It grows in Utah and Idaho around the Sun Valley area, and it has a uh, bluish. Mm -hmm green foliage, but it flowers with broad open panicles in mid to late June. Oh, nice. It looks like this cloud, kind of like, not yeah. as dense as the champs, yep. more open and cloudy mm -hmm. so you can see through it, through all your other plants. Oh, beautiful. And, and I thought, well, it's going to die here right. when you have clay soil. Right. But it's actually done well in our uh, heavier clay soils as long as it's not overly irrigated, mm -hmm. then it dies. It, okay. it's, if it gets too wet through irrigation or a low spot, mm -hmm. it, it can't get through that. Okay. So I've had it now almost nine years and it's done, it's done pretty well. And this is, uh, what's the sun exposure on this? It's Just mostly full sun. Mostly full sun. Okay. Some light shade, but mostly okay. full sun. Okay. And then it reblooms because it's confused <laughs> in uh, September. So it'll rebloom through its old flowers. Oh, wonderful. I think there's a botanical term for that. Grass okay. is that rebloom. Okay. There's a in botany there's a, a term for that is that a reliable thing that it does some of the panicums do that too okay. some panicums will rebloom nice. in, in longer growing seasons wonderful beautiful it's a, it's a cool plant the foliage is very yeah. nice yeah i tell you what there are so many so many sedges out there to learn and then 
you have brought this plant, oh, yeah. which I this didn't one. even know existed. So I'm pretty excited for you to tell us about this one because this is news to me. This is a native Pachysandra. It's native to the Appalachians. Mm -hmm. It's Pachysandra procumbens, mm -hmm. and it makes a the foliage is gorgeous. It's got very nice cut foliage. Mm -hmm. It's a little deeper green in the shade, mm -hmm. and it spreads by rhizomes, and but it's not evergreen, mm -hmm. so it's green brown. Okay. So. I don't really use it as a total ground. You could actually, mm -hmm. as because in the winter, if your snow is on the ground, you're not right. going to see it anyway. Right. And then uh, the flowers are much larger and brighter white. Okay. So when it blooms, it's much more outgoing. Okay. And what the way I've been using it is blending into sedge matrixes. So I'll put a sedge planting in, mm -hmm. and I'll just pop two here, three here, mm -hmm. two, and just scatter them through. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you can add wild geraniums to it for a little pops of color. Right. I mean, apples, you can put like the pulmonary with the silver foliage. Yep. Wow. Yeah. You can put pulmonary through yep. there. So you can add and enhance the garden continuously, especially through the sedge matrix. Yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Well, I love the tech. I mean, I'm, I just think this texture, I can see how that would work so well it's with, nice, with, a, yeah. with the sedge yeah. because the texture is just so beautiful on it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, this is great because I didn't realize there was, no, it's not, there it's was a, not a, a you know, native, uh, native pachysandra around so that's pretty pretty amazing yeah, when I look I saw at pachysandra it. in a whole new way now well why not right <laughs> right why not right. why not look at everything in a whole new way right that's, that's I, I tell you what i always you i always learn about a different plant or a different way to use a plant from you right it's always well, you're too nice it is always a pleasure <laughs> so, it is always a pleasure to a to learn about these things because this is this is i mean i'm gonna guess there's probably not a lot of nurseries you can buy this at other than Northwind. There, it, there's more, but there's not that many. Yeah, yeah. so Northwind it's kind of one of those things that you have to know about to go seek out right, probably right. Um, because you're not just going to run into this right. at, at any old garden center. So. Well, it, it's that part of constantly becoming aware. Yes. And I think that's when you start a garden, that's your beginning. Right. And then there's endless possibilities. Right, right. And so this is just one of the things we can try and and, and what I like too, it has durability. You're not worried about that. replacing it. I, yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah. I love that, absolutely. Yeah, I always say that, you know, you can have a few diva plants in a garden. You can oh, yeah. have plants yeah. that you push it on because it's worth to right. experiment with them or you really love them. But the but the backbone of the garden has to be workhorses like this yeah. that, because that is not sustainable in any way otherwise, so. You'd wear yourself out financially and physically right. if you had to keep yeah. replanting everything. Right, yeah. right, absolutely. And it just proves that there are workhouse plant, workhorse plants that that are very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, it's not like you, it's a sacrifice, you right. know, they're beautiful, interesting plants, especially if you pair them, like you've mentioned, mm -hmm. in, a, in a situation where they work well with what's well, around it's, them. It's, uh, I would say it's not the plants, it's the composition. Right. So it's not yeah. the it's not the notes that make music have a rhythm. Yeah. It's how they're put on paper. Yeah. And that's why I tell everybody every person has a possibility to be that person to put composition. Mm -hmm. It just takes some time to know the plants, and then boom, then they go. Wonderful. Like right. here. If you look, turn around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Right. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Wonderful. Oh, well, thanks for bringing these down and thanks for telling me about all these plants. These are, these no, are great. I, I can't this, wait to add I enjoy them the sharing is cool. Yeah, it is. It's I enjoy enjoyable. it quite a bit. Yeah, it yeah. makes it a lot of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, wonderful. Thanks, Roy. I appreciate all right. it. Thank, thank you for coming down. Well, this looks great. And checking this out and giving me giving me your honest opinion of how I did managing no, it, this over, it, over the it's past It's one year, year old and then you have the opportunity to try the different flower colors mm -hmm. and soft blue with dark mm -hmm. blue. And, and that's, again, what gardening is. It's I would say it's finding time to be your own best friend, you know. We right. got all these people. Yeah. Can you help me? Can you do that with me? Can you, well, you know what? Right. I got time for myself here. Right. And this is a place to do it. Right. Wonderful. Well, I couldn't be more thrilled with this garden. I mean, I, I enjoy it so much. So I'm so happy we've been working on this project together, and it's really, it's a treat to have you come take a look at it again well, this it's, year. It's very enjoyable to be here. Well, let me good. tell you. Good. Wonderful. There's a lot of cool things you're doing. Great. And sharing. That's Thank the you. best part. Yeah.